welcome in Bill Pedo. How you feeling, Bill? How you doing? We're going all the way, baby. Feeling great. Yes, sir. What a day it was yesterday, Bill. What a uh, crazy for uh, 24 hours from the trade uh, to the game. And then we heard the news that OG and Anobis had surgery. And then we had a potential uh, Isaiah in, uh, Hartenstein injury reoccurrence. Uh, let's start with the big move yesterday, the trade deadline. Right. What was your initial thoughts when you heard of this deal? I was thinking we should have Leon Rose run the country. <laughs> what a great trade. Uh, I'm just going to be fascinated to see how this works out with the rotation because when everybody's healthy, uh, you're going to have off the bench, and this is with Mitch back, assuming he's back. I think the expectation he's going to be back before the playoffs or at least in time for the playoffs. So you'd have, let's say, Mitch starts. You're going to have Achua, Hart, Hartenstein, Bogdanovich, Burks for 10. We know that the coach only plays nine. I'm assuming that McBride falls out of the rotation. Um, so how's this going to be? Maybe Achua, who's been really good, loses minutes. I don't know. It's going to be fascinating to see how Tibbs deploys this group. It's going to be by far the deepest Knicks team we've seen in ages. Uh, I think it's great. I think Bogdanovich can help here near term without Ananobi and without Randall because he's six seven and, and is – uh, pretty solid up front, although not as good nearly – no one is as good as OG on defense. But I think this also helps uh, for the near term. I'm really excited about this. Um, I, I think when healthy, um, they get their bearings. I think they can make a run. I think – and they didn't give up any first-round draft picks. Quentin Grimes has re regressed this year. Well, I think it's just great trade. You got uh, you got Bogdanovich just signed for next year. Burks is up, so you got Bogdanovich if you want to keep him on the books for $19 million, which is exactly what Fournier was, was making. That's just great. Yeah, speaking of, uh, obviously, um, as you said, you know, the, the shooting, we basically replaced production lost with, with quickly RJ Barrett, 20 points per game. Bogdanovich comes in with Alec Burks scoring 12 points per game. He's familiar with the system. Do you feel like Alec Burks then is the backup point guard? You don't think Deuce McBride is going to get any backup minutes? You know, Tibbs loves Burks uh, when he was here. Remember, he was on the team when the Knicks finished fourth, Tibbs' first year, and lost the Hawks in the first round. Uh, that's already three seasons ago. But Burks was a backup point guard a lot on that team. And, in fact, started a lot when Alfred Payton didn't start at point. So I, I, I don't love Burks as a backup point guard, but I just I have a feeling that uh, as good as McBride's been, I, I just think his his days getting a lot of minutes, I think, are, are, are finished. Yeah, certainly very competitive now. Deepest roster since at least 99, in my opinion. Um, now, obviously, uh, you know, the, the East, you know, the, the New York Knicks are currently close to the third seed. Cavs are in the second seed right now. We had the news that OG Ananobi is going to, you know, miss up to possibly three weeks minimum. We had the Julius Randle situation going on. There's just three games left till the All Star break, so this has come at a good time, Bill. Oh, no question. Hartenstein's banged up with that left Achilles. Brunson's out with an ankle. You know, you have to be almost a medical doctor to go get through all of this when we do the games. Uh, hopefully you get more clarity on OG and Randall after the All-Star break. I don't know if Brunson plays a game or two before the All-Star break, and maybe you just shut, you shut Hardenstein down. Um, the Pacers are in town tomorrow night. They haven't been good since they got Pascal Siakam. Then you're at Houston and then at Orlando, and that game Wednesday against Orlando before the All-Star break, the Magic have already beaten the Knicks twice this year. So they got some pad. Look. What is it, uh, 16 and 3 or 16 and 4 in their last 19 or 20? I mean, they, they've just been phenomenal. So that gives them some pat. Uh, you just, you know, you want to be in the top six. Um, and I think they're virtually a lock for that now. Yeah. Obviously, we had a, a good sample seeing OG and Anobi with the current starters. And, you know, the New York Knicks went on the run. Obviously, the defense has got back to where it was before, even better around the league. Uh, is there anything that you can, you know, see the Knicks get that advantage? Obviously, with this, you know, new acquisition, 
But with OGN and Obi's strengths together with Brunson, we saw them fight valiantly, bravely lost to the Dallas Mavericks, very shorthanded, but still pulled it within 10, you know, late. Got a great coach. They play hard every night. Uh, you know, there's no such thing as load management. These guys play when they're healthy. When they don't play, you know, they're legitimately injured. To me, Ananobi is a great fit because he does not dominate the ball like RJ did. He can get 15, 18 points on eight or nine shots. And a lot of what he does on defense is under the radar. And uh, then you look at the stat sheets, he got three blocks and four steals, and he totally shut down his counterpart. So Ananobi is a great fit. And I think he, in many ways he's, he's a really good fit because, again, he doesn't need the basketball to contribute on offense. RJ, as much as we love RJ and Quick, they both were ball dominant. They needed the ball. Yeah, no doubt. We had uh, Taj Gibson breathing heavily. You know, he's giving it his all. Uh, the Knicks have a couple of open roster spots. The buyout market commences, Bill. Uh, you know, we've seen some guys like uh, Marcus Morris, uh, Kyle Lowry look like he might get bought out. Could you see the New York Knicks, you know, solidifying another roster spot or two in this interim, maybe even a 10 day, just to see them through to the trade uh, to the uh, all-star break? I don't know if you're going to get a, a guy like Morris or Lowry for only 10 days. And I would be against uh, adding even more people to the rotation because I think there's going to be a challenge as it is. You know, if you go out and you get a Burks and Bogdanovich and then one of those two comes here and doesn't play, I don't know how that, that would, I guess we'll see. We'll see how this works. I would be against bringing in one of those guys for, uh, for a short term. Yeah, with I mentioned the Cavs being in second, Bill. You know, if let's say a, a best case scenario, you know, Randall and Co. return after the All Star break or near then, do you feel like the Knicks can get that second seed, yeah, and also uh, you know take and match up well against the Boston uh, Celtics? Obviously, Philadelphia. The news that Joel Embiid is going to miss a large amount of time, and they're sliding right now. And so are the Bucks. The Bucks are one and five. Uh, with Doc Rivers, so that hasn't gotten off to the greatest of starts. I think the Knicks can challenge Boston. <clears throat> Excuse me, the Cavs have been remarkably good. Uh, they went on an amazing run, even without Mobley and Darius Garland. And the one thing that we all need to remember is they added Max Struess and George Niang off the bench. They could not shoot last year against the Knicks in that first-round playoff series, and these two guys can really help. So you got uh, the Cavs, I think, uh, may be even more formidable right now than the Bucks and the Sixers. Uh, I don't know. We, As you mentioned, Embiid's out. Who knows when he's coming back? So I think the top three in the East right now are the Knicks, uh, Boston, Knicks, and Cavs. I think Knicks got a good shot to finish second overall, provided they get these guys back. And look, we don't know. We don't know what Randall's going to be like when he comes back. Yeah, definitely. But that, that makes this trade even better, uh, Bill. You know, Leon Rose has definitely addressed all the needs or close to uh, you mentioned Indy exciting game coming up looks like Burks and Bogdanovich could be uh, ready to suit up uh, how could you see the rotation play out do you think Bogdanovich comes straight in at the three and you push Hart back to the bench precious with I heart still you know that's a good question uh look last night they had to play Brown and Toppin <laughs> they had no and McBride uh if Hardenstein is out Maybe a Chew is your five with Taj off the bench. Burks plays. You're still really shorthanded. Maybe you maybe start Bogdanovich. Or maybe you keep hard. I don't know. I don't know. I, I just think this is makeshift until everybody gets healthy. And uh, when everybody is healthy, you see uh, the Bogdanovich and Burks both off the bench together with Hart. And, yep. uh, and also, um, yeah, the backup. Obviously, we wait to see what happens with Mitch as well. That's That's very deep. Bill, and you can also spread the minutes around. You know, you don't have to play Jalen Brunson now, you know, close to 40. Yeah, the um, one of the things that people I don't think have emphasized enough, I've tried to, uh, obviously, Ananobi's been a great ad, but the Knicks are like 21 and 10 without Mitch. And I don't think anybody saw that coming. And no one realized that Isaiah Hartenstein's a legit starting center because he never had the chance to do it. Hopefully he's left Achilles is going to straighten out and stop being a problem because he's been just fantastic. He's, and, you know, you make the case maybe the team is better on offense with Hartenstein, with the starters, and not Mitch. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, Achua. You know, how, how, production, how productive has he been 
uh, and useful since coming in. It seems like the coaching staff have done a great job, you know, unlocking some of the talent uh, that was there since the Miami days. Yeah, and, you know, he had some good moments with Toronto, and he's been really good lately. I think a lot of these guys just need minutes, and now he's getting minutes. So, um, again, it, it's I guess it's a it's an it's an embarrassment of riches when these guys are healthy because they have so many so many options now. Yeah, we just got to get healthy. And uh, recently, we had uh, Mike and Clyde celebrate their twenty fifth anniversary. Bill, you've been on the call a few times this year, right? Is there another game? Any plans for you? to be on the call again this season i'm not sure you know i'm, I'm pretty much uh, the studio guy the the deal when i call the wizards game kenny had a kenny albert had a uh, issue with his football game logistically so i kind of slid in there but you know mike and clyde are legends they're both in the hall of fame <coughs> excuse me and um you know I, I i said this on the air uh it's one thing to be hall of fame people at what you do but they're hall of fame guys off the air they're so without ego they're so approachable they're so wonderful and that's what uh that's what makes it so great with these two guys that they're just hall of fame people away from the job yeah their uh, personality shine their knowledge uh, you know their humbleness and uh, they're 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 funny uh, as well so it makes it even more entertaining um the msg group chat would have been buzzing after this trade uh, yeah, how, how, how's the general feeling? Uh, everybody's really excited. Uh, that was a great trade with Detroit. I mean, he gave nothing up. I mean, uh, you got a little bit older, but look, Grimes to me, I don't know what happened. Maybe he's just not happy. Maybe, not, first of all, he's got the knee problem, but also he just wasn't really good as a starter. You know, DiVincenzo goes in there and he's been great. Look at the acquisitions here. You got Hartenstein, uh, Hart last year, DiVincenzo, OG and Anobi. Um, amazing, really amazing. We're not giving up, up a lot, you know, second round picks again, RJ and quick, maybe it's a better fit with OG. Now I just, I'm just got to be really impressed with what they've done. Yeah. Plenty of uh, accolades to go around bill. We've had Jalen Brunson, first time all-star. I feel like Dave Vincenzo is putting himself in the MIP conversation. Leon Rose, right? If this train doesn't stop and we continue to surge, possibly executive of the year, right? A lot of people are feeling like the Knicks won the trade deadline and well, these are neutralists. And nobody did anything. Nobody, nobody else did anything really that significant. Um, I'm surprised. I guess Grant Williams didn't work out in Dallas. I'm surprised they moved him. Uh, I thought he was, gonna really, I thought he was really important to Boston, but I guess he, he didn't get along with the Mavs too well. <clears throat> yeah look his play really fell off uh he was in my fantasy team actually the first month of the season he was drilling threes uh that the three-point ball fell off for grant williams but you know the big guys that were available were going to be available you know murray stays with the hawks bruce brown stays with the raptors the right. bulls of stan pat the lakers didn't do anything right right i mean it's crazy tillman uh the tillman acquisition is is uh could be good for boston <clears throat> yeah and pat bev goes to the milwaukee bucks um yeah. for cameron Payne, that's a bit of a, a better defensive fit however yeah. as you said i think the bucks are really struggling under the new um you know adjustments as well as dame you know coming yeah. in yeah i i don't know what's wrong with them basketball chemistry is a finicky thing so it is yeah there's only one basketball to go right. around right and uh Fortunately, we have a, a group of guys willing to share the ball, right? It's been a, a great stretch, and I look forward to an even bigger end to the season with everybody back. Hopefully, like the Avengers, they all return right in the nick of time. Bill, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, and I look forward to the coverage for the rest of this season. Hey, man, uh, really excited. Great to see you, and let's, uh, let's do it again around playoff time.